Overtime. And welcome back to the Overtime Podcast, episode 14. I'm your host, Matt Manukor, and I got it right this time. So for everyone who said, <laughs> bring back Willie. Willie's without us again this mm. week, but we go again. I'm your host in the hot seat, and I got, I'm joined uh, in the other couch by our man, TMO, Mr. Aaron Ryan. How's it uh, going, brother? Thank you for having me. I am going good. Auckland Rugby had their first yes. one over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, yes. We are now one and four against awesome. Harbour. Yeah. Um, so I'm feeling very stoked to be here. Actually. Yeah, very stoked, bro. The NPC competition, obviously has been underway. There was a huge match with the Battle of the Bridge. How'd it go for you guys, bro? <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. We we got it down at the the last minute, managed to score despite the uh, sweaty ball tactics. I don't oh, yeah, know if yeah. you heard about that, okay. but um, we won't talk about it because right. the end of the day, we won. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. No, that's that's awesome. And I remember seeing some promo material beforehand with young Cameron Sofua and uh, Akira Ioane right at the bridge. It's pretty cool to see how, they, how um, you know, New Zealand rugby is able to build up these matches in that type of fashion. And I know for uh, the Battle of the Bridge, it's always an exciting one. So it's great to hear that the the Auckland boys got up and got their first win of the season. And hopefully we can uh, tumble into getting some more wins throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. Now, getting getting straight into it, bro. Uh, the Rugby Championship is, is underway. And obviously the All Blacks, we spoke a little bit about it last Ooh. week. Uh, they hit... They're still in South Africa for their second test against South Africa. Unfortunately, this time around, they dropped the game 18 points to 12 in an intense match um, in Johannesburg. Your thoughts on the game, bro? Oh, Initial thoughts. Man. You know, like uh, I was feeling sick yep. um, the day, the night before because we had a big na- night out on Friday night. Yes, so yes, I yeah. had to wake up early for Auckland's game on Saturday. So I didn't get up for the Auckland's game, mm. uh, for the All Blacks game. But the next morning, I did watch it, didn't look at any socials, just went in straight. Um, watched the game and man, I was hopeful. Eh? I was really hopeful. Um, but in terms of the thoughts on the game, there, there were some really promising signs though. I mean, yep. we didn't score a try, but I thought there were some combinations that uh, worked really well. Like I th- I think seeing Satiti and Damian McKenzie, despite what many people are saying about Dam- Damian McKenzie right now, I thought Satiti and Damian McKenzie's combination, uh, so you saw Satiti a lot um, offloading back door yep. uh, and that tend to like get us space to um, pass it out, um, you know, to um, our wingers and our centres. Um, I thought Satiti had an outstanding had game. An outstanding game, yeah. um, You know, for someone who's just come into the team, hasn't played, like, very many professional games. Like, he started off uh, making his way through the development squad for the Chiefs, got on the bench from the Chiefs, and then played, a, like, what, nine games of Super Rugby, four games of NPC now he's playing All Blacks. So it just shows you that rugby's in his... Um, his DNA. Uh, I thought South Africa um, played smart too. They they really d- and my my favorite thing from the game, to be honest, bro, yep. is watching their coach, South Africa's coach. Rassi. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Rassi. He just smiled. He was laughing. He was just enjoying the rugby. Yeah, that's what he <laughs> rugby. <laughs> he was enjoying the rugby that was they playing. They really like the rugby over there. <laughs> yeah, over there in South Africa, yeah, you South know. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was enjoying it. Like yeah. he. You, you could see every time I went to the coach's boss, box, sorry, he wasn't stressed. He, he he knew that his team had it in them. And it looked like if they lost, they'll be like, sweet. Yeah. You know, we, we know we can um we know we can do this eventually. So now I um a bit guttering to see that the All Blacks didn't score, that they didn't win, and it looked really, really tough on the players. Um but yeah, how, yeah, how do you think the yeah, game? Yeah, it did look very tough on the players. It was, it was unfortunate to see the All Blacks win, uh, lose, sorry. Um, a first time in 75 years that the Springboks have beaten the All Blacks in four consecutive matches. First time uh, since 2009 that the Springboks retain or regain the Freedom Cup, the, mm. the uh, cup that's played Fifteen. between both of those, uh, shared between both of those Country. So it's a bit. It was a bit worrying, um, but I was encouraged by the performance of Wallace Titi, young Wallace Titi. Mm. He's usually playing a number eight, uh, but this time he he uh, he filled the in in that number six, and yeah. he was. I thought that he uh, was outstanding. Man, he had some really good with ball in hand. He's a strong carrier and yeah. in open space. He's got quick footwork that gets him off the mark really quick. And we saw that when his, in his break through the middle, bro. And I was like. You know, cheering at the street, like, come on, man, you know, finish <laughs> it off or find an offload and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think um, I think we were missing the the expertise and the sort of power from Caleb Clark on the wing. Yeah, um, And also I, th- I thought Will Jordan did really well at the fullback position, but 
Yeah, the, again. The, the only thing about Will Jordan for me now is, um, is he better use in the in wing the now? Wing, yeah. Because they put him at fullback thinking he was going to get in the game more. Yeah. But we saw he barely was able to touch the ball, and if he did, he kicked it. Kicked so, it away. Yeah. yeah that's, your, that's what I understand about rugby, bro. That, that <laughs> kicking game is something that, um, that the All Blacks are – known for now not running the ball but i felt mm. like if he was he would have been able to you know play a bit more eyes up and and take on the line and and really use his attacking flair that he does when he's on the wing then uh, he would have been a bit more dangerous so uh, yeah i definitely agree with you that i would like to see him a bit more involved uh, on the game now we look back at the game and we look back at the rugby championship for the all blacks the worrying signs for them um, after they've suffered their sick third loss in four games. <laughs> yeah, and and um, that's the fourth loss into South Africa in yeah. a row too. And the worrying sign, I don't think we have to worry about the All Blacks. Okay. I think they'll, you know, I think New Zealand rugby's got a bigger issue. Yep. But I think we don't have to worry about the All Blacks uh, because South Africa are just on a really high roll. Like, yeah. I think people tend to forget all Blacks last won a test series, or first won a test series in South Africa in 1996 when Sean Fitzpatrick put up his hands to finally celebrate. And that's a hundred year, you know, at that point it's probably like 80 year history. Yeah. But um, we only won our first ever test series in 96, had a bit of a role. We slumped to Australia in the late 90s, early 2000s. But we've just been on this high, yeah, this real high for the last 15 years. So, you know, the rest of the world has caught up. And now... I mean, I could be contradicting myself. We maybe have to be worried. But um, I think the main point that they really need to worry about the All Blacks now is not scoring a point in the last 20 minutes of yes. both games. Yes. They never got to do that. And it makes me think, um, not scoring a point in their last 20 minutes, are we missing just a try scorer like Hoskins Satutu? Yeah. Like, you know, if you look at our flankers, if you look at our um, back, oh, not our back three, but, you know, our six, seven and eight, they're just real hard men. Grinders. Eh? Grinders, you yeah. know? And that's the style of um, Razor, right? But are we missing someone who's – oh, sorry, are we missing someone for a bit of flair? He talked about last week, you know, the reason why he put TJ Pedinara and Bowden Barrett on the bench is because they had issues finishing the games. Well, it showed against South Africa. Yeah, <laughs> we when didn't they came really on and the they game. didn't finish – yeah, they so, couldn't finish uh, the yeah. game. Yeah, do you think we're missing someone like Hoskins or Tutu? Yeah, I think so. I think you're exactly right. Someone to break the game open in that type mm. of sense. You know, the likes of Richard Moonga as well. I thought that he was mm. sorely missed, uh, and especially with ball in hand and open space, and he can – we uh, missing a sort of X factor in all in all from one to fifteen. Uh, I think that uh, you know we saw glimpses of it, glimpses of it when Bowden Barrett came on against in the English series where he provided the X factor. But I think with a team against uh, with a team like uh, when you come up against the likes of South Africa, it's it's hard to you know, go down to the wire and grind. And we saw that in the World Cup final last year uh, when it went right to the grind and South Africa just outmuscled us and, and won those small moments. And I think those small moments, again, in, um, on Sunday morning's test against South Africa was where South Africa bested us. Mm -hmm. uh, they looked a lot more comfortable and cohesive as a group. Uh, they've, they've become accustomed to winning. They've become accustomed to winning against the All Blacks. And I think that, that Rassi, you know, going back to your point about him um, him being happy, smiling, not without a worry. I think that that's the testament of our sentiment of the whole team and mm. the whole group. And when you're the All Blacks and you see that in front of you, when you see these guys that are just relentless and that are winning, you know, winning the breakdown or winning penalties or, or winning in those small moments or big moments, um, it can be hard to break through, uh, break through both mentally and, and, and physically when it comes to scoring tries, but also when it comes to, yeah, point, putting points on the board and to your point as well you know like seeing the coach uh Rossi and how happy he was he he's got a south africa just know seem to know who they are they're yeah. the rainbow nation you know 95 rugby changed their rugby changed their whole country so they have something to actually play for it feels a bit like the all blacks don't quite have that yet you know we we're literally just playing for the all blacks yes. and the all black brand they're playing for a country so is that something that we would need to work around in as well but also Sia Kolisi he wasn't really um 
meant to come over, yeah, go yeah. over to South Africa. They were trying to keep him over um, at his club over in Europe. Yeah, in but France, he was man. like, nah, I don't want to miss that. Whatever got done in the background yep. to get him over here, he showed he wanted to be there. So if I'm a team and I see my captains come over yep. and maybe my club's offered me a, a couple of extra thousand um, to stay there, but I come instead, then I'm, I'm playing for them. What next for the All Blacks, bro? What do you think they need to do in preparation for the Wallabies test? Yeah, I think they. Um, you can tell Razor, by the looks of things, he's trying to build for the World Cup. Mm. So I think these games against Australia uh, in a couple two weeks time, just get those debutants out there, get as many as you can, uh, as many people to start um, as you can as well, um, and just look for those combinations. Um, and I really hope to see some of these NPC players from all the teams possibly get some surprise starts as well. And also the All Blacks to release some of the All Blacks to play in the NPC as well, <laughs> yeah. because we need to give them game time and help those teams out as well. Oh, definitely, man. And, you know, just coming to my, my last question for this part of the segment, bro, um, young Wallace Titi, uh, I saw a moment after the game with him and Sia Kolisi, the captain mm. of, of the Springboks, where they embraced and, um, you know, he could see the pride and he could see the joy on young Sititi's face. I mean, he comes from rugby royalty in, in Samoa, yeah. but what do you think this meant for him in, in terms of getting his first start against the Springboks, the mighty Springboks over in South Africa? Well, I think if you're Wallace Sititi and he looks like he's, um, although he plays with just a real rugged style, you can see he's got a, a bit of a pass on him too, yep. but he also looks like a student of the game. Mm. And I think Sio Kolisi is just one of those um, lifetime characters that the whole rugby world, and you're going to have to really know rugby to know Sio Kolisi as well, um, that he would have looked up to in the forwards. Like Sio Kolisi has probably been the best player over like maybe what the last seven eight years yep. um and so for wallace to grow up you know he he gets a lot of information from his dad you know too his dad would would teach him some really um some really just like good traditions of being a Samoan man and looking up to your elders and stuff like that. So, and he probably sees a lot in Sia. But I also think it was a moment for Sia to come in. He saw that there was a new kid. Um, he came and debuted and played really well. So he probably was like, you know, trying to say, keep your head up high, just keep going because you are one of the standouts for yeah. the All Blacks, bro. But, oh, definitely. Yeah. Ah, Sia, it's, it's a great, uh, I thought it was a great and touchy moment for between those two. And I completely agree that it was a moment for both of them. Um, and hopefully, you know, I saw comments after the game that people calling for Wallace Titi to retain that number six jersey. Mm. There's a bit of talks that for him to go at number eight and then shift Artie back into seven, move Scott Barrett into six. So there's yeah. a, a lot of a lot of reshuffling. It's, it's sort of figuring out those combinations, uh, what works best for the All Blacks, what doesn't work best, what are those things that, or those players that are really comfortable in those positions. And I think that he, you know, he's only 22 years old, bro. Yeah, so I think crazy, that he'll yeah, yeah. hold a recurring, um, a recurring presence into the the rest of the rugby championship. Now speaking and, of the rugby, oh sorry. And you, can you, I just add one yeah, more point? Yeah, no Th worries. This is to go back to you <laughs> dogging on rugby and it not oh. being played fast. <laughs> yeah. All right, yep, yep. saying you don't know the rules yep. and saying that like you know it's too slow. Yep. South Africa is showing that you can play the game slow. You yep. can play it with big forwards. There is a game for big guys yep. and the little guys. That's what I love about South Africa rugby at the moment is they're showing you still need the big guys. You still need the little guys, and it's a game for everyone. Yeah. Not just rugby league where you, they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> they all built the same yeah, and they yeah. can play any position. <laughs> nah, uh, yeah. So shout out to the spring box, shout out to the uh, the rugby boys. So now just just going through the, the final upcoming test for the rugby championship. Now we've seen some great results. Last week, the Argentina men thrashed the Australians uh, 67 points to 27. So now this is how it's looking uh, up to finish off this rugby championship. New Zealand faces Australia at the Core Stadium in Sydney this Saturday on the 21st of um, 21st of September. And then South Africa uh, face Argentina at Estadio Único Madre de Ciudades Santiago de El Estero Sunday, September 22nd. And then New Zealand face Australia at Sky Stadium at the Cake Tin. Hopefully they can string together a win uh, back in the capital on um, the following week, September 28th, and South Africa versus Argentina at Mombella Stadium um, to round out this rugby championship well, at the end of September. Well done for reading that, because I just realised you got these dates left. Like, <laughs> 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 I was yep, like, I know, hey, oh. how come you see New Zealand Australia? Sorry, to Argentina. <laughs> 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 nah, yeah, so all the best to the All Blacks and all the best to um, the Springboks, Argentina and the Wallabies in the remainder of these rugby championship tests.
Now, bring it back to New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand Rugby League schoolboys mm. had an outstanding uh, nationals competition over last week, and we saw an eventual victor in St. Thomas uh, College in Canterbury. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, get to what you. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it was an interesting time. I started watching the game. Yep. And um, all the commentators could talk about was how big the Southland, uh, the you know the boys from the Christchurch, South were. Christchurch yeah. boys, yeah, bro. So uh, St Thomas is one of those schools that have been a prominent addition to the New Zealand's uh, first thirteen secondary schools boys nationals competition. Um, I remember when my brothers were playing in the in the nationals competition back in twenty sixteen, and um, they came up against St Thomas, and it went down to the wire. And I'm thinking this Christchurch school which Christchurch is known to be a rugby union city, um, putting on you know, these, these are massive boys. Yeah. Uh, they're putting on great performances against the boys from Avondale, you know, some of the boys, some of my mates and that. And I'm thinking, what are they What are they doing down there? To, what are they to feeding them? Yeah, what are they feeding them? <laughs> what are they doing down there to, to uh, produce such good rugby league? But they've got a really great system. They've provided a couple of Kiwis um, and Jermaine uh, Isako mm. um, and some of, the, some of the other boys as well, Fa'amanu Brown. And um, yes, there's, uh, there's plenty of talent that comes out of the South Island, but it was a huge, huge win for them um, in the secondary school boys' first 13 uh, competition. Uh, they beat De La Salle in the final, uh, winning... Winning, uh, let me just get the score <laughs> 24 hey, points to 18 and a nail, game, yeah, <laughs> and a nail biting final. It was, uh, it was a huge task ahead of St. Uh, De La Salle, who lost to uh, St. Thomas earlier in the pool rounds. But yeah, it was a tight game. St. Thomas got out to an 18 nil lead. Um, and De La Salle fought back valiantly before the end of half time, and then the second half, it was a lot of back and forth. It was quite, uh, it was a game that really went down to the wire. And um, unfortunately, oh, unfortunately for the De La Salle boys up in here in Auckland, uh, St. Thomas were able to streak away with the win with a late try uh, on the outside on the oh, right. So wing, they so. scored in the second half. Saint yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, St. Thomas. So, so to close out the game and win the game. So I was unfortunate for for De La Salle, um, which is, sees a lot of our Pacifica boys, but also it sees a lot of our Pacifica boys in St. Thomas who look huge. Yeah, who look massive, yeah. bro. Your th your thoughts on <laughs> on this uh, victory for the South Island school? I I, I love that. Um, a South Island schools winning the rugby yeah. league competition just because Auckland we've had our we've had our range. St Paul's were champions for a long time. Yeah. We've even had Calston come through. We've had De La Salle of late. Yeah. You know, we had like you said, Evandale College. But it's cool to get these um because you know this plays like Simon Mannering, yep. Lewis Brown that yep. have come from the Warriors. They've all come from the South Island. So yeah. and those guys have been pretty pinnacle players of our career. So if we can if we can breed more of those down there and then to play for the likes of the Warriors and uh, New Zealand, ah, then why not? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, why not, bro? And, and, and that just shows the, the stature of uh, the system that's going on down in rugby league. I, now, I played some rugby league in, in Otago um, and they've for the Otago Whalers against the Canterbury, Canterbury Bulls. There's always tight matches between those sides because they have um, Canterbury Bulls have such a good system and have such a good talent pool of players. I mean, you've you can pick from some of these quality players that come from rugby union and come to play rugby league, mm. which uh, which I think that they can find some success or they have found some success uh, in doing so. But they've got some good coaching staff down there. I've met some of the coaches uh, from Canterbury region, and um, it, it, you can see and and we spoke about it off here, bro, but. You could see how big those boys were from St. Thomas, man. Yeah. Can I can I ask though, what's the yeah. difference between um, people who play in Christchurch to, to Auckland? What what do they do differently? Because even when you watch the South Island teams actually play, they play with a bit more structure, yeah. a bit more like, um, I guess, heart. Yeah. As in a lot of Auckland schools, we have the skill, we have the size. So for so long, we've been used to that. Yeah. But what is it about just playing and, and the system that they have going down in Otago and the South Island? Yeah, good question, bro. Um, for the South Island, obviously, the plethora of talent is a lot smaller. There's a, less, a lot less teams that compete in both the junior grades, but also in the senior level as well. I remember when I was playing um, rugby league in Otago, there was only three teams in the mm. in the open men's uh, grade, so there's a there's a lot less competition down there. So I think uh, in doing that, you get a lot more chance to sort of refine on your skills with the less um, a competition that you have. I guess they like like you said, they have a lot of heart down there. Now I've played with some of the boys in Greymouth down there, and and that's 
Bro, that's from Auckland, as an Aucklander. Greymouth <laughs> is completely on the other side of the world, yeah. bro. Uh, but those guys had a ton of heart. They had, you know, I'd say in, in some moments of the games that have more heart than me, they'd mm. want to run the ball up and they'd want to make those effort areas and effort plays in, in moments that a lot of us boys from Auckland that would, would not even think about doing. So I think it's it's a... The South Island is... Obviously, there's a lot less people down there. Uh, they produce a lot more, a, a lot grittier players that really want to stay in the fights that really want to you know battle it out um, for the full 80 minutes in rugby and rugby league which we see uh, often see from the crusaders and we see mm -hmm. from the highlanders that really like to grind out those those wins and for rugby league in this instance i think um, they're finding that success because of the systems that they have in place um, and they're starting to develop some of the talent down there um, a lot more um you know, due to the fact that they're that they're getting into more quality coaches from overseas, but they're also you know bringing up some of their their grassroots coaches as well to help nurture the talent. And I think that's what you need um, in in this context for especially developing young players. Now in Auckland, in contrast, uh, we have players that play Auckland Rugby League, and they've there's 20 teams. You know, there's 10, 15 yeah, teams that we get to play. Too. There's so much players and so much talent pool that. Um, and I, in my opinion, I can I think that it can get it could get quite discouraging as well uh, as a young player just to know that there's other players out there better than you in the yeah. Auckland Rugby League, um, <laughs> uh, in the Auckland uh, area. But when you're down in South Island and you know who's the best, you, you there's a slightly <laughs> smaller. I think that that contributes to their confidence and they and they really go out there and, and produce these uh, great performance and great results. Now I see I seen after they had that win. Um, and you can see the sky camera going up on them, and uh, they're playing not like us yeah. by uh, Kendrick Lamar, bro. And I'm like, these guys, <laughs> Ooh, confidence. the South Island, the South Island boys, ah. bro. So you think as an Aucklander, man, <laughs> these, what are these South Islanders getting <laughs> yeah, all the confidence yeah. for? But um, it's the TikTok generation. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's it, bro. It's exactly that. And uh, I think that it was. Uh, it was a great result for rugby league. Uh, it just shows the growth of the game in in and around uh, New Zealand, and it will ultimately benefit from or, you know for our Warriors and for the Kiwis in the future. Yeah, and you know what always impresses me about that's just the South Island yep. is how actually mongrel they are. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, they are, the, man. Those um, you know, you saw a lot of De La Salle boys, and in the South Island team too, yep. Saint Thomas, a lot of Island boys, eh? But Heaps. those those Balangi boys, and but like if they're um, either team, ah, they just know how to go. They get smashed, they get back up, and they like straight run <laughs> they again. Run again, yeah. Yeah, like I, I really appreciate about you know some of those rural rural guys and and country country boys yeah they just really get into things and yeah. like they just yeah have no mercy against anyone yeah. you can smash them heaps of times <laughs> but there's 100 percent that you're they're gonna get back up yeah that's sometimes different to an islander yep. they might get smashed and yep. then but all their families and stuff are mocking them on the sidelines <laughs> <laughs> they might refrain from holding the ball so right. or they know they're gonna get in trouble from their dad exactly you know, yeah the they, home, so. they it gives a, a bit of different um, different type of intimidation eh, in that yeah. sense. But, you know, you look at the, the St. Thomas boys and speaking of them, some of those boys and especially those island boys, they're big boys, man. And mm. all I'm thinking is what, what <laughs> do they feed the boys down there? They're, they're real true blue Kiwis, you know, real um, – Real getting that that good grind and getting that good good lifestyle down there. So it's it's um it's a huge opportunity for them and it's it's great that they get to come and try their hand against the best up in Auckland, but also uh, in the nationals as well. So a huge congratulations to the St Thomas yeah, boys. Congratulations and St Thomas and to De La Salle and to De La Salle as well. De La Salle, hopefully uh, you, you boys can come back next year and, and be stronger and better for it. I know our man, a cameraman, Joshua Safiti, is a former De La Salle boy. He'll, <laughs> he'll be reeling from that loss, but uh, we're thinking of you also and hope that they the boys can get up next year in the uh, for the next competition. Now, in our last talking point, bro, yep. the NRL has recently Ooh, wrapped up. What a season. And what a season uh, yeah. it has been for all the teams, bro. Just just before we get kicking into it for the mm. finals uh, preview, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts been throughout this whole, um, this 2024 year? Oh, man, it's, it's actually been really, um, I think it's been one of the more competitive NRL seasons. Besides, if, instead of your, Sorry, I think it's been uh, more of the competitive <laughs> um, seasons in the NRL, except if you're the Melbourne Storm. Oh yeah, Melbourne Storm, they're right. just ne next level, and I wouldn't be surprised if they just take out the whole thing. But you know, you everyone underneath the Melbourne Storm, from the Sharks to the Roosters to the Panthers, you never really knew who was going to win. Like you saw, you saw the Warriors beat the Broncos, yep. and the Broncos ended up just under the bottom eight. But then. 
two weeks ago, you saw the Eels smash the Broncos and the Eels uh, almost got the wooden spoon yeah, if it wasn't for the Tigers losing down the weekend. So, like, um, it's it's also been an interesting time for how uh, to see how young the NRL is actually getting. Yes. Like, you look, probably because of the speed of the game, yep. um, but you're seeing more just young people uh, become the stars. It's not so often now we might be seeing these Cooper Cronks who are playing till 36, 37 yep. because of the style of the game. It's fast and it's a better game for it. But, you know, you've got Crichton who's only 23 years old and he's the captain of the Bulldogs. You know, you got um, Cam Pareda, who's only uh, a, along that age, 21 or something 21, like that. I think, yeah. And, he, and he's sprinting off. So it's a young people's game. And it's been, yeah, I've really enjoyed this NRL season just because of the competitiveness on yep. it. And, I mean, you saw Sharks who are sitting third or fourth. Fourth, um, yeah, fourth, fourth, yeah. And the Warriors beat them the other weekend. Yeah. And they fielded what was pretty much the, their strongest sides. Although you have seen a lot of injuries to this season yes. um, from many players, like Nathan Cleary has been out twice. Nico Hines was out for a while. So, um, yeah, what are your thoughts on the NRL season? Yeah, the, the NRL season has been outstanding, man. It's It's been a roller coaster ride for myself as a Warriors supporter, but also <laughs> in general, just seeing all the, all the, up the news. Wise. Up to share. Shout out to the Warriors. Up to wise, man. Always. 2025, we're going to win that NRL <laughs> championship. Uh, but, yeah, no, nah, I think that it was – it was a outstanding season for a lot of different teams and a lot of different reasons. Now we saw uh, the resurgence of, and I'd call it a resurgence of the Melbourne Storm. You know who who are who know historically know how to win games and how to. Um, you know, how to close out games, who to pick, but also who to develop and how to develop. We saw in their game last week where they have a number where they had a number of their stars sitting out and you had essentially a C team for the mm. uh, for the Melbourne Storm go out there and still collect a win and in emphatic fashion at that. Now we saw the Broncos unfortunately as well drop to um, you know, outside of the eight. They were in in competition of uh, making the making the finals and making the top eight yeah. towards the end of the year, uh, but unfortunately they just struck with injuries. But also uh, when they welcomed back some of their starting players, it just it didn't click for for the mm. for the Broncos. There was um, some trouble off the field as well, which which has happened as well. Tigers, uh, who who unfortunately won the won the wooden spoon, if I could say that. <laughs> uh, they had three years, three in, years in a row, three row unfortunately, for the, for the West Tigers, but they collected some wins throughout the year. Uh, there was a bit of questions about Benji Marshall and his coaching tactics when early in the year he went off on holiday. Yeah, yeah, um, he went for two weeks yeah, to England. Yeah, he went on a holiday to England and overseas, so people were questioning his his validity as a coach, uh, which was really strange. Um, but hopefully he, he's going to welcome Jerome Luai uh, back into the fold next year for the Tigers 2025 season. Uh, we saw the resurgence of the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, hey. who for the first time in tw uh, since 2016 have made the NRL finals. So yeah. that's been that's been awesome. We've seen the rise of Stephen Crichton as the captain, like you mentioned before. Um, we also who really recently leaded. saw Josh Adekar. Yeah, and Josh Adekar and the, new, and the news. There's a lot of <laughs> lot of dramas as well coming out of Belmore, but we're hoping that they are able to to do some really good things. So there's a lot of a lot to unpack from this season, um, and we go into these finals with a, a set uh, eight. There was a bit of um, there was a bit of clunkiness in the in the mm. bottom. Uh, around the eight position, who yeah. was going to win? Because there was like four teams on the on yeah, bro. It was a, like that, I think eh? it was the Raiders, the Knights, the Dolphins, the Manly Seagulls, yeah. um, who are all fighting for the eight position, um, and uh, it rounded out to be the uh, the Manly Seagulls and the Newcastle Knights to secure yeah. that that eighth position to secure their place uh, in the NRL finals. Now we're looking at the the draw this week. Mm -hmm. um, so the first game up, we have the Melbourne Storm, who are in first place, yep. facing the Cronulla Sharks, who are in fourth place. Uh, second game, we have the Penrith Panthers versus Sydney Roosters, uh, who are second and third. Uh, North Queensland Cowboys uh, in the first elimination final will, will face the Newcastle Knights, who are in eighth. And the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs will face the Manly Sea Eagles in seventh place. So there's a lot to unpack in those finals, bro. Your thoughts on uh, those matchups? Well... Uh, I want to ask you. Yeah. Who's the surprise? Who's the surprise win? Do you think? Uh, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right here and now. Um, so this is this is the obvious choice of the NRL finals that that any anyone could pick, but I think that it'll be the Melbourne Storm um, versus the Penrith Panthers in the final. So that they'll meet in the final. Oh. So 
I'll pin that as the grand final, <laughs> but in my wild card and who I think that's going to make it, yeah, yeah. that'll be cool. Yeah. I would love to see the Manly Sea Eagles get up and get and win the whole competition. Really? The Manly Sea Eagles? Yep, I'd love oh. to see that, bro. They're like the Auckland of New Zealand, eh? <laughs> People think they're arrogant because yep. they got a really nice beach and yeah. all the <laughs> flash houses over there. Yeah, yeah not too many people are like Daily Cherry. <laughs> 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 uh, there's, I think there's a lot of a lot of young talent um, in that team as well, but also Daily Cherry Evans, like you mentioned, he's, he's what, 34, 35? So he's coming on to the end of his career. Mm. So it'll be good to send him off uh, with a uh, with a premiership. I, I remember seeing in the in the start of the year they produced some some uh, document or some docu series of their preseason training. Now the Manly Seagulls are the only club, or I think one of the only clubs, to win a premiership in every decade that the NRL mm. has been around. So the one that's missing at the moment is the 2020s. Oh. Um, so now that, that that's their goal to try and win the premiership over the next five years. And I think that they've played some good footy this year and they could possibly steal it. Yeah. I, 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 well, it takes me back to Manly City was beating the Warriors in yeah. 2011, <laughs> yeah. which uh, we shouldn't spend too much time on because let's yep. not live in the past, Matt. <laughs> However, um, yeah, I'm uh, in, regarding like – I was thinking this weekend who is going to be the surprise win. Yeah. And – Oh man, Where, oh, is this number the four? Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah, um, I feel like out of all the wins, because you got the North Queensland Cowboys um, over there as well. But I don't know. I've I feel like the Bulldogs would be the surprise win. I mean, that have to beat Manly. So I'm sorry, I wouldn't. Yeah, be no, going that's all right. Yeah, I think yeah, like you said, the obvious matchup is Penrith and the Storm. Mainly because Penrith, they haven't been the, especially the second half of this season, they haven't been the flashiest, but they've shown they can still win games. Exactly, especially yeah. without Nathan Cleary, who who was such an who is such an important member of their team. Yeah. For some reason, they're coming coming away with these wins and yeah. close wins too. Exactly. No matter who, they're just winning, yeah. and that's what the Melbourne Storm are generally known for. I mean, thanks to the likes of the. Um, talent depth in the Melbourne Storm with Jerome Hughes, Pappenhausen, for Alongo who can't get a starting spot. All those players and all those Samoans who joined the backline the other week. Um, <laughs> there were uh, heaps, man. There were heaps. Yeah, there's a whole backline. Yeah. Uh, at some point, but because of their depth, they've been able just to thrash teams. Because um, what is it? The coach just knows <laughs> how to how to get the best out of them. But I feel like if anyone's going to pull out um, an upset, uh, it's going to be Canterbury. Um, Bank Sound Bulldogs. Oh, if they can get over what's going on with them in the news, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot going on in the news, and you mentioned it before uh, with Josh Adokawa. So that looks like he's going to be out for their finals um, appearances. Mm. So there's a lot to to sort of lift for the, the Bulldogs, but I think that they can. They've been a strong team throughout this year, and they've you know Cameron Serraldo and the boys over in um, over in Balmore have have really done well to bring the group together and to, you know, string some some wins along this year, some outstanding wins at, at that. But also we're seeing the likes of, you know, in the last couple of rounds, they got smoked by the Cowboys. You know, <laughs> yeah. the, um, before, I think it was that last round, yeah, they got smoked by the Cowboys, which they'll have to carry that into this week uh, when they face the Manly Seagulls and, and try and, you know, you know retouch on those, um, on those feelings um, throughout, uh, when they were in that winning period earlier in the year, uh, so there's a, there's a lot to unpack for for all these teams. But I think we'll just we'll go through all the the things and we'll get your predictions on yeah, it, yeah, and, yeah, and what you reckon. Um, so the first first game out, we've got the Panthers versus the Sydney Roosters. Yeah. Who, who are you picking for that game, bro? Yeah, we'll, we'll go the Penny Panthers. Yeah, yeah not we'll the go Panthers. for the boys from uh, Western Sydney, Australia. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'll go for the Penrith Panthers as well. I think they'll get up convincingly. Uh, I'll convincingly, I think they'll, it'll be a tight match, but mm. uh, I think they'll secure the win. Melbourne Storm versus the Sharks. Yeah, we'll go Melbourne Storm. Jerome Hughes is an he's out, he's an he, outstanding. He's, he's a Dally M. If it yeah. doesn't win. Then whoever runs the Dally M, you obviously don't like New Zealanders. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Jerome Hughes is just in too good of a form. And yeah. um, even Katoz, he showed again why he's one of the most athletic back rowers out he's there. Great. Yeah, and, mm. and I think that if they're able to utilise them well, they've, they're – Utilize their back row as well, like they have been doing. But also, if their uh, spine is able to click, like they have been doing with mm. Pappenhausen, there he's, he has he had a bit of niggle over the past couple of weeks. But um, I'm sure he'll be firing come come our finals time too. So all the best to, to the Melbourne Storm and the Cronulla Sharks. North Queensland Cowboys versus Newcastle Knights. Who you picking, bro? Oh, ah, oh, this is this is the game of the round, I believe. I mean, 
I really like North Queensland Cowboys. I think Helium Lukey yep. is um is in massive form. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah. Uh, j- just because of his form of late, uh, I'm I'm picking the the North Queensland Cowboys. Cowboys. What about you? Yeah, I picked the Cowboys too, bro. I just mm. I don't like the Knights. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and the yeah. Knights, if you don't play Kalen Ponga, they yeah. don't have a good game yeah, without yeah. Kalen Ponga. Exactly. Literally, yep. they haven't been able to play you know many good games. Yep. But Kalen Ponga is he's the only person going forward in their team yeah. yeah and he proved that um last week in their win against the dolphins to secure their place yeah. uh in the in the nrl final so all the best to, to those two teams and now coming into last of the game the last game canary bulldogs versus the manly sea eagles how do you Ooh. see this one going yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I know Canterbury Bulldogs. Yeah. I said it's yeah, 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 my like... pick to win the comp <laughs> as a surprise factor, but I think Manly's going to win. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, just because Daly Cherry Evans, for someone, you know, like Daly, for example, he, the older he's got, he still maintained his speed. Yeah. And he still maintained the same way he's played. Really? Like yeah. his, uh, he pisses people off. He, yep. You know, he still manages to get those intercepts. He's another one that's better like – Unfortunately, he was in the same era. Oh, maybe not unfortunately, but he was in the same era as Cooper Krong, as Darren, or oh, the end of Darren Lockyer. Yep. But, you know, a player like that, so he his light, his flowers haven't really been given. But yep. I think for Daily Cherry Evans, and um, you, you got the Taniela Paseca there yep. now. Tommy Talao is, is finding yeah, some form, yeah, you yeah, know. Amazon, yeah. um, coming from, I believe he came from the Tigers. He um, did, so, yeah. yeah, I think Manly and their forwards, they got a scary forward pack to me. Yeah, right? oh, they, they're, they're mon- monstrous forward pack yeah. uh, for those sides. And to contradict myself too, bro, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Bulldogs <laughs> to win this game. Even though I picked Manly to win yeah. and I talk so highly of them, um, I, I just want to be different, bro, and just yeah. try and um, <laughs> pick someone different. No, no, no. That, the Bulldogs. That, that's good. I yeah. mean, you know, it, it means that nothing is solidified. Yep. And uh, when sports is never solidified and, uh, and everything is in doubt, it's yep. great entertainment. <laughs> That's it, bro. <laughs> so, yeah, the NRL finals kick off this week. So all the best to all those teams that are, are playing. And, uh, you know, hopefully we, we can come back next week and unpack a little bit more about who the winners were from this week and uh, you go in depth more. That comes to the end of our first segment for the podcast. Um, thank you, Aaron, for your input into into well, that section. It's uh, definitely the end because it'll be searching up new camera it? equipment <laughs> on, the, on the screen. You can't here. see, guys, but the camera is right. <laughs> the, the screen's right so, there. So uh, if you can't see anything, <laughs> there's a TV in front where we're going to play a game uh, of C and Henry. Yep. And we can see everything Edelty's doing, <laughs> but I think he forgot. And during while we've been talking these last five minutes, <laughs> he's been searching up new camera equipment. That means wrap it up, guys. That means that's enough that talking, guys. Cut, cut, wrap it up. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up, guys, and we'll be back with Sian Henry from New <laughs> Fems The Rush after this break. <laughs> 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 And welcome back to the Overtime Podcast. As we mentioned before, we have some special guests that will join us in the studio. Uh, but as tradition for the Overtime Podcast, we're going to introduce them in emphatic fashion. Mm-hmm. So introducing <laughs> from New FM. Let's go. The Rush, Sia and Henry. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for the music too. <laughs> John Cena. <laughs> 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 Just the mic's on your Just right. Just the mic on your right there. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Sia. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you, son. Yeah. No worries. Um, obviously, yeah, welcome to the <laughs> Overtime <just> Podcast. <laughs> Unfortunately, you were without... Hey, hey, let's leave our family. Our <laughs> back home, okay? Family by the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt's sorry, trying sorry, to hey, talk. Hey, hey. Oh, sorry, I know I sorry. didn't make my bed this morning. All right. We're all back right. to Matt okay, Manukuo. Back, 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 yeah. Manu- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back, to, back to... Shout out Matt Manukuo. But yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, shout out yourself. Shout out to myself. <laughs> yeah. um, we're with our old man, Willie Poaching, who is overseas at the moment. But we he would have loved to be here to to have you guys in. We've been calling for you guys to come in. Uh, the Rush is probably one of our favourite, if not the, our favourite team um, here at PMN. That's you know, funny if we're favourite and we got asked like way <laughs> many teams later. Hey. That's, That's funny. You're the favorite. Joseph's been here before we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned in all our guests, Everyone's excited to come on. <laughs> like, oh, finally, we've, we've been asked to come on the podcast. But again, thank you so much, guys, for, for coming on. I'll just get you to introduce yourself, your name, and who you represent um, here at PMN. 
Start with uh, you, Henare. Kia ora, my name's Henry. I represent The Rush. I'm one half of The Rush, and we do the afternoon show on UFM. Woohoo! Lele, I am Sia. I am the other half of The Rush, part of the new FM team. And nervous to be here. <laughs> I know nothing about sports. Yeah. She looked down the barrel of the yeah, camera. Yeah. Wow. That's how you know you're nervous. Connect say. with the viewers. <laughs> Have you got to put your feet down? You were nervous. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. Um, but and um, thank you both for coming on. I mean, it's um, it's just a bit of a chat, really, about you know, it, it's not one of those things where we get people on to um talk into great detail about sports, but it's just people's stories about sports and how they're growing up. So um, for the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> You've picked the wrong people for your podcast. Oh, and, and, oh, that's and, right. and that's why we guys <laughs> got yeah, you on, to break it all up. Um, but for the both of you, um, we'll start with you here, Nade. Because, oh, yeah. um, we do want to touch up on um, you've been going through a, a really cool, you know, um, fitness journey that we'd like to touch about. Hinade, mm. uh, regarding like sports in your family, was it a thing? What was your experience or relationship with sports? Girl? I hated sports as a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's only because I was a fat so. I was a little fat kid. So I would wait for everyone to run on the field. And then while they were playing rugby, I was rummaging through their bags. <laughs> To not That's a sport itself, steal their really. lunch, <laughs> steal their lunch money. Yeah. Um, but in terms of sport, I'm just not very athletic. Mm. And I've come to terms with the fact that I'm all right yeah. okay. not being a sports person. But you've, you've remained in pretty good shape for Thank you. That's like, yeah. uh, depression and bulimia. <laughs> That's uh, alcohol. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Cut that. Well, yeah. no, also when it comes to sport, my family are huge sports people. Like, oh, wow. But because we were, not only was I fat, I was also poor. So we only had one TV in the house mm. and it was always on sports. Yeah. So when I eventually got my own TV, I said I will never watch sports <laughs> well, Where did you grow up in, Eddie? Where? Yeah, like, did you grow up in, in West Auckland? Auckland? Oh, in Tiasas yeah, no. Peninsula. Born and bred. Shout out West Auckland. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's my relationship with sports. Oh, I only go to a sports game to drink. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. That's what they want you there for. Yeah. You're the people who keep those people employed, you know? You're right, I am. So yeah. I'm going to need a cut of <laughs> Adi Safia's salary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's my relationship with sports. I'm okay with the fact that I... Because, you know, not everything is for everyone. Mm. I was too busy watching... Jerry Springer and oh, yeah. Sally Jesse Raphael. I was a bit worried when you paused there after yeah. watching. <laughs> <laughs> a bit worried when you paused there after watching. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And for yourself, Sia, has sport been a part of your family or yeah, how, yeah, how's your TV. relationship? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how's watching your relationship? her sister rugby. Yeah. TV, um, I was never into sports. You know, I was always kind of one of those kids in school that was always the last one picked for a team because they knew that my athletic skills were so great. They're like, <laughs> save Sia for last. Um, as my siblings entered this world, got into weekend sports, you know, the rugby, and I'm really the hearty supporter mm. that likes to make her DIY signs at home, <laughs> take it with me, make sure that my sign is bigger and stands out compared to everybody else's <laughs> sign. Um, yeah. yeah, but I enjoy going to sports like Henry for like a drink mm. and for the social aspect of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, when the Mate Matonga games were on, Ooh. like hearty, like in red, going to all the games. Ooh. I didn't understand a damn thing. <laughs> I only just understood the difference between rugby and rugby league a few years ago. <laughs> and the way my brain processes it is rugby league, you get the ball six times and rugby union, you don't. Don't, yep. don't tell me otherwise. I was going to get confused. It's going to be too confused. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's pretty much sports for me. Didn't I did make the cross country team though when oh, I was at Papa Toy Toy wow. South. Probably the last one that made the qualifiers, but um, <laughs> don't know how that happened. And yeah, other than that, not really athletic at mm. all or well, sporty. Talking a little bit about your, your athletic journey, because oh what you do is athletic. Uh, tell us a little bit about the journey that you've gone on. I know you speak about it a lot, but we'd love to hear it on this Overtime podcast. Of Stand up and give us a twirl. Hey, 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 yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Can we get a before and after shot of hey. uh, I'll see you on the podcast? Now I'm shy. Yeah. Now, has been, for those that, that are unaware, she has been on an inspiring journey, our health health um, journey over the past nine weeks, uh, but also over the past couple of years, I believe. Um, and she's you know, do documenting that on her social media pages, but also on her um, fitness pages as well. Sia, could, could you unpack that a little bit about how you got into um, this health <laughs> journey and also this athletic journey? Well, because it is athletic. After, uh, you talked about <laughs> I'm, like I'm, that. I'm, I'm looking at you too like, had I known he's going to ask me this? Um, oh my gosh, I'm a little nervous to talk about this. Um, yes, so you're right in the sense of I've been trying to work on my just overall health in the last few years. 
Um, this year, I decided to join a new gym. Yep. But shout out to BFT Airport Oaks. They were the first like group fitness that I joined here in Aotearoa mm. um, in 2023. Now I've jumped into the world of, I guess, CrossFit. <laughs> um, and for the last nine months, I've been at Fit Mums. I have... I guess become a part-time athlete. I don't know. Because yesterday, it was funny. Yesterday, the CEO goes to me, I've been carrying my air fryer to work to make my food while I'm on this um, 12-week program. And he said, oh, you know, Manu Watawe and them, they used to, that's what the, the warriors used to do, carry oh, their whatever oh. they needed. Right? And I said, are you calling me an athlete, dog? <laughs> um, but the journey has been very interesting because the Transform program that I'm on is, um, it's so different. Eh? Henry has had to unfortunately just listen to me unpack like all my emotions and stuff along the way. Um, but this world of CrossFit, you know what? I admire anyone who is jumping into it because actually it's for everybody. Hmm. It does not matter your level of fitness. There is just something there for everyone. But I think the true test of this CrossFit world is the mental, the mental game. Like it's your discipline. It's the resilience to like not, Doubt yourself, but just keep giving things a go. Mm. But for the journey for myself, um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it is fun. It's a little scary, but I also, sharing it on social media allows me to hold myself accountable mm. just to be like, cool, see, I went to class today. And <laughs> here's what I did to not listen to the coach. <laughs> and, and speaking of like being held accountable to you two, obviously very close, you know, um, mm. you guys for a wee while, um, separated shows, but now you've had the opportunity the last couple of years to do shows. Um, what, what's your guys? Uh, what's your relationship and support like with Sia? Like, is there something you know she mentioned coming into studio, and you know she releases a lot of what she's doing mm -hmm. <laughs> about what? Yeah, um, with you, what's that journey been like for for you? I don't think for Sia the hard bit is the fitness. Mm. I think for because Sia and I and, and myself we talk about this quite often. Like we are foodies. Mm. Like Sia and I both grew up as fat kids, and <laughs> so we understand. We are fat so Like we understand <laughs> the, the the struggle with food. Yeah. I think Sia's biggest mental struggle, I think, at the moment is, is sticking to her plan and her food. Mm. And there's times where I've seen her question herself. I've seen the times <laughs> when she's having an argument in her head, like I'm just gonna eat it. I'm just gonna eat it. And I have to constantly remind her, like you have put in all this work. Like if you have your peanut slab now, it's not going to be as satisfying mm -hmm. if you just wait for the end of it. Yeah. So I think the, the biggest support thing is the food because prior to Sia getting skinny, <laughs> not skinny, we were sitting here, our show finishes at 6 p.m. We would sit here until 10 p.m. just eating. <laughs> like takeaways, yeah. everything. We were just eating, eating, eating. And then once Sia decided, you know what, like I need to make a change in my life. Mm. Everyone else had to stop eating as well. <laughs> Yeah, I remember times there would be, there, there would be like, uh, you know, you guys would wrap up your show at six o'clock and they'd be like, oh, we're going to go to this place. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys want to come? We're going to go night markets and haven't really seen that lately. So, yeah. well, the gang's we'll gone from like five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think the biggest thing is just the the the, the mental strength. And again, I can only relate it to, to what I understand for fitness because I'm don't go to CrossFit. I'm not interested in going to CrossFit. He's a runner though. I, oh, oh, I, he runs. I, I do enjoy so. running. At least it's running. Some sort of activity. I do enjoy running. It's just the the the, the, the mental struggle with the food. And the, I've heard CSA before, like it's 90% nutrition, 10% the gym. Yeah. And I truly believe that. Like yeah. it's just the, the the struggle with food that people have is wild. Yeah, and it's it's something so essential for athletes. You know what what you consume is what you have, what, what comes out. Actual, yeah. yeah. And um, you are you know, what you, you eat. Yeah, which you are, I don't it. get because half of those rugby players are snorting coke off the table. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? Well, we just saw saw Josh Edo car from the oh, well, skateboard okay. or something. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, so there's a there's a lot of that goes into uh, an athlete, and uh, you know, in this thing that we call sports, it, yep. it, it incorporates food, it incorporates what you take and incorporate your mental and your support uh, system as well. So all these things go into um, sports. So on that front, you do know a lot about sports and both of you know a lot yeah. about what it <laughs> takes right. to be a sports <laughs> person and athlete as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's awesome. And sticking with, the, with sports and obviously your guys' time here at New FM, has there been any sports men or women that have come into the New FM studios that you, you can remember or that you've had some good interactions with? Valerie Adams for me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, wow she's literally. at the top of... Well, when sports... 
stars come in for interviews, I'm not usually the first pick to interview <laughs> them. <laughs> Neither of us are. <laughs> but I, I, don't I think see Valerie this... Adams is the one that I think of. She's just a very likable gal. Mm. Yeah. I think also because the Valerie Adams that you see on the social media, she's the Valerie Adams that you actually get to meet in person. Wow. Yeah. When she sees you out in public and she, like, I think she's one of those... Um, She's one of those famous people that meets you once and she'll remember. Yeah, yeah. She, she remembers you and acknowledges you yeah, regardless man. what space that you're in. But definitely Valerie Adams. Like, But I, can I say something? I remember the first time I saw um, Sean Johnson. Oh. And, you know, I was at a, I was at a theater show and I just hear everyone be like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, it's Sean this is me. It's my friend. Who the hell is Sean Johnson? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, that guy over there. I was like, oh, it's like he is handsome. So the show, the theater show finished. Yep. And I just hear whispers of people being like, oh, my God, I want a photo. Sorry, Sean Johnson. I actually didn't know who you were, but you know, I was the first person that went up again. Hi, can I please have a photo? All of a sudden, everyone starts lining up. And this is me in my head. I'm like, yeah, I just yeah. got a photo of the yeah. whatever team he was with. Whoever he was. Yeah. 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 But that was cool meeting him. He's Any? a tiny little man, eh? Sean Johnson. He's not that much yeah, shorter he's, than he's you. He's a bit shorter than me. Yeah. Oh, true. So he's, uh, I was surprised when I first met him. And, mm. you know, when you front these plays, they look massive on the TV. Yeah. You see them in real life, and yeah. some of them are. Are quite small, but when, I'm telling you, when I saw Valerie Adams in real yeah. in person, she's, she's a giant. So we're at this Pacifica <laughs> um, Sports Expo or something like that, and uh, she's at the back of the room and she's standing head and shoulders in front of in front of everybody. And I'm like, man, how good is it to see her command that uh, respect, but also command that uh, presence when she walks into the room as one of our own uh, most successful athletes in the country, but also for the Pacific Islands too. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that was that was quite cool. Yeah, and. <clears throat> Henry, I want to come back to you of running because oh, yeah. I never pictured you <laughs> as a, oh, as a oh, runner. That's cool. Just because that's of why. I didn't picture yeah, yeah. you running from the cops. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Why didn't you picture? Oh, my voice. I sound like Willie Poaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened? <laughs> Me too. I, I got a bit of a cough. Probably what I get. Um, probably because I've never heard you talk about it. That's all. Yeah. Um, but what what made you decide that running was going to be something that you you enjoy doing as a yeah? I guess I don't actually fitness. know. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that question. You know, I usually have an answer for everything, but I don't know why I started running. <laughs> yeah. I used to, times left you speechless. <laughs> I used to enjoy running as a kid, but again, it was because I was fat that I felt like I had to run. Sure. And then as an adult, I just picked it up again, and I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe it's just one of those things like… Therapeutic? Um, yeah, I guess so. I guess it does. Head. Well, the thing with that, with it, and, and I hear people say like extra runners. I wouldn't class myself as like Usain Bolt or anything, like, <laughs> but I just enjoy running. They always say like it's a moment to clear your head and I guess that's what it is. Yeah. Like if you're focusing on catching your breath, you're not focusing on the troubles of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's and apparently running and walking is a whole body workout too and it's not just physically but it's also, yeah, a good way just to clear your mind. Why do you not picture me as a runner? Because you've never talked about it. You talk about everything else. I don't talk know? about it. Can you not tell by his Look physique? at my physique, Aaron. Yeah, Look yeah. at that. I just didn't believe that you said drugs was the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, but uh, but also uh, for you, uh, Sia, what Henry mentioned it before about you know when you walked in one day and said you wanted to make a change when it comes to eating and exercising. When was that moment? And yeah, what was that like? There's been many moments throughout my whole life, like when I couldn't bend down to tie my shoelaces, <laughs> when I couldn't put on my jumper without struggling to breathe. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think come around like two, three ish years ago, I was hitting like. I've hit, I, I've hit a bottom, I've hit a, like a bottom place before and I was just like, oh my God, I can feel that I'm mentally getting back there. And I was like, see, you need to make changes. And it just, it was one of just those, those light switch moments. And I was just like, I need to, I need to make that change and I need to make it now or I'm just going to get worse and worse and worse. But it's also funny because one thing me and Henry laugh about heaps, um, and this is just the way we process our <laughs> trauma, um, is we like grab up old photos of myself, even from years ago, and then we both sit there laughing. I remember the first time Henry said to me and I showed him a photo and he goes, well, I can't believe you were that fat at the time. And I looked at him like, did you really just, did you really just say that to me? Um, but even at that time, like, and it's, for people like myself, if for those who've been in my shoes, and when you actually make the changes and you start becoming healthier, it's not even just about physique. A lot in a lot 
still remains the same in my mind. Like right now I'm kind, currently going through some sort of body dysmorphia. When I walk into a shop, I automatically still look for the size 24 mm. clothes that I used to wear. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas right now I, it's so funny for Sia to walk into a shop and know that I can grab my size off the rack. Mm. Yeah. And I have to pay more for the extra material that used to cover <laughs> my body. Yeah. When you go to make an outfit yeah. and be like, oh, we need an extra like, meter. Do you know what I've always said? I've always said, and only fat people will ever understand this. Once a fat so, always a fat so. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not talking physically, I'm talking mentally. Mentally, yeah. yeah. Like, only people who have struggled with their weight will understand what I mean by that. Even if you've lost all the weight and now you've got the biggest ass, or you've got the biggest muscles, mm. you've got a six pack, you will forever view yourself at your heaviest. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because even like my dad, he was very athletic growing up. Yeah. Um, and he he went into a part where he played for Manusa more rugby. Then once he come to wow. the end of his career, he, you know, and he got married to my mum, he stopped playing rugby, you know, they, they started working, but he kept eating the same. As yeah. if he when he was playing rugby, oh. and then he kept putting on this weight, and he's never been able to let it go yeah. because in his head, he's like, um, I don't know, he thinks he can still eat a whole lot of food, yeah. but he's just not transferring it to. He, but back then he was doing a lot of exercise, yeah, yeah. So he was leaving he was it. So it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he was burning it. So in his head, he still thinks, oh, I can eat a whole bunch of food, and now it's just yeah, it's been a struggle, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. But even with what Henry said, can I just say like that's what I used to think. What's a fat? Mm. always a fat. So what I've come to learn as I talk with other people is that. Even the smaller people actually have the same or similar yeah. experience. So it, regardless of your size, I think learning, especially as Pacifica people, mm -hmm. we sit high in rates such as like obesity, diabetes, diabetes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's learning, and I wish I learned at a younger age, just how to live a healthier lifestyle so that we don't have the struggles that we're having now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And, and one of those things or to, to mitigate those factors or, or those um, word, mitigate. mitigate. <laughs> yeah. Can you spell it that manukuo? T-I-G-A-T. Shout out mitigate. Shout out mitigate. That's Amazon College education right there. Why mitigate? But yeah, definitely to mitigate those factors. as Through those one of those things is through sports and you know what you're doing right now Sia is really is one of those those ways that you can help our communities or inspire our communities to really lift themselves Themselves off the ground, but also you know create a better future for themselves, their families, and those loved ones around them. So, Amen. a huge congratulations uh, for doing that, but also a huge congratulations for your support system as well, mm, um, who yeah. you have around you. Because without that, it's definitely uh, it definitely makes this thing that we do, we call sports a lot harder to do. And and I applaud you, Henry, for in this especially in this workplace because you work so closely with us here for for walking alongside her brain and, and doing that. You know, um, so from us at the overtime team, you really. Really proud of you both, you know. <laughs> Thank you very in this, much. In the sports, um, in the sports context. Now, I believe we you know we we close off that chat and we're moving into a game that our Mister, our TMO, our Tiny Man official has prepared yeah. for us. So, yeah, we, we, um, well, yeah, Tiny Man official yeah. over here. Um, well, well, we got my little tiny screen over here that I take with me everywhere. <laughs> but, it's bigger um, than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, no fat shaming over here. Okay. <laughs> um. You know, it's one of those things that you spoke about moments. And we're going to play a game with the both of you. Okay. okay? Oh God, I'm and this is going to be called, What Happened? So can everyone do that with me, please? <laughs> what, what Happened? happened? Yeah. So it's going to be What Happened. And it's some of the pers biggest Pacific sporty moments that have happened Bro, we're screwed. over the years. <laughs> we are absolutely and, screwed. And exactly. That's why I've, I'm doing this game. Right. Yep. So there, there might be <laughs> some... <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, what really goes on in that, uh, <laughs> that studio? <laughs> but this is some of the biggest Pacific sporting moments. And what you're going to do is Eroti is going to play out a moment. We're going to pause it. And then you guys are going to tell us what, what you think. Happened? Yeah, what, what you think happens. <laughs> and it, it doesn't have to be serious. Oh, no, what happens be, next? What happens yep. next, oh, yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much. So we got uh, this one over here. This is back in 2009. David Twill versus Shane Cameron. Oh, I was just born this year. <laughs> you wish. Oh. So, Do you what, know what happened? I remember oh, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> but what happened next was Shane Cameron. Does he knock David Tua out? What's the answer, Eroti? No, no, you, 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 you what do you guys oh, reckon? Is the answer? I do yeah. remember there was a massive upset with Shane Walker. Uh, not Shane Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Walker and Shane Cameron. The Lord is watching you. together. Oh, Shane, shout out Shane Walker. <laughs> with, uh, Shane Walker Shane. and David Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, we hope David Seymour was one of them. We just... I do remember something about Shane Walker. <laughs> ah, fuck, sorry, Shane Cameron. I think Shane Cameron got knocked out by David the Tua? David Mentor. Yeah. yeah, the David Mentor. Um, because all I can see in my head, who's the guy that got his ear bitten? Uh, but I know that's not Mike, Mike Tyson, uh, yeah. Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. Yeah. So that you're gonna lock your answers in. Yeah. So Are we having the same well, answer the, or separate David answers? David lost any yeah. games. Yes. Um, yes. yes. Oh, this is I think this was one of them. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm Shane go Cameron wins this one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So answer is Shane Cameron wins. So if we could play it, please, Eloti. Oh, no, I think we got it wrong. Oh, yeah, we fucked that up. Oh, we mucked that up. Oh. 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 This is. He yeah. gets KO. Mm. <laughs> okay, I think we're right, yeah. right. Jeez. <laughs> he got a hiding, bro. Whoa. Oh, wow. Well. Shane Walker. Shane Walker. Someone hooked 685 hook right yeah. there. Why do we think, oh, why that, do I think that Shane That was known as the, uh, the fight of the century in New Zealand. Oh, maybe where, that's why I remember it. Yeah, it was pretty big in 2009. Um, See, and I can't remember because so. I was just born that year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you, you're still drinking. Oh, oh, hold on, Sia. <laughs> we're on to the next one. All right, Sia oh, Henry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, would you like to... Hey, yeah, can so see me the, in the crowd. We've got the next one. This is at Mount Smart Stadium back in 2017 during the Rugby League World Cup. Um, we'll play the clip. The game is between Tonga and England, and we'll play the clip. Yep. Oh, gosh. Oh. English hearts are beating now. English minds focused on keeping out this red wave. Pause. What happens here, guys? Tonga wins. Tonga wins? Tonga wins, yep. Yeah. How do, think, how do you, oh, you want to know specifics? Like, yeah, what's yeah, yeah. What do you think happens? Uh, what happens? These... Dinah Jane comes out. <laughs> and... She sings the anthem again. <laughs> oh, say can. Ooh. It's her and General Fire. They come out at the same time. Um, I think I think I was at this game. Oh, yep. Yeah. With my Tongan flag. Yeah. Is this the game where they like literally scored seconds or something like Right before, before the, the uh, well, they only got yeah. three seconds left. Yeah, they got three seconds left on the They're two points down. But yeah. is this the game like when it's time up, you can still go until the ball is out of the lines? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the game. Oh, yeah, so they got the score. Okay, Donga scored. Yeah, yep. I agree. Um, <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> I hate this game. I hate this game. It's dumb. <laughs> All right, a bit of a bit breakdown of, about this game. That's Andrew Fafita. He's going to the, the ref. The ref has called the game off. He's not going to look back at the, the decision. He's not going to look oh, back. Oh, they didn't look at the screen. They called they full time. The Controversial finish to Tonga's um, outstanding run at the 2017 Rugby League World Cup. Uh, their hopes that were over. Like Eroti on the field. Oh, <laughs> Who's the security guard? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, no, I actually do remember that game because yep. then me and my Samoa and girlfriend we went together and we were standing there we were like, no, yep. they didn't. Yes. Yeah. 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 I don't I remember uh, that. I don't know. I thought I, you were going to remember it to be honest. 2017 was wasn't a good year for me. So. Oh, <laughs> I was in the hospital yeah. then. I was just born that year too. <laughs> wait, wait. No, <laughs> hold on. I remember this one. All right. Well, all right. I've said so that about we got the Kiribati uh, weightlifter here. Oh, this is from recent, hey? Uh, yeah. What year? Uh, 2020? 2016. Oh. Nice, he's strong. Kitty boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got a throat. Yeah. Something cracked. Yeah, his bone. So this is uh yeah, so this is David uh David Katoto from Kitty Bus at the Olympics back in 2016. So, so what, what happened? Happened? what happened? His he pelvis snapped, broke. No, he snapped his shoulder. Mm. He snapped his shoulder <laughs> Something and his pelvis snapped. broke. I love the anatomy. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I know, I was just like, that's... Um, can we watch it again? Please? Sorry, Roti. Oh, look, man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, my God! It's like a, a thriller. Ooh, a um, okay, He's I'm going to say specifically what his right... Fibula. <laughs> Phalange. <laughs> Fibula. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it is right. I don't think it's his elbow. I think it's his shoulder. I think what happened is he was playing a prank. <laughs> <laughs> At the Olympics. Well, That's he, the wrong time to yeah, play a prank. No, it's I been think, four years for this moment. I think he was mucking around. <laughs> no, oh. but You cannot muck around with 208 kgs. That's his third attempt. He's got a very womanly figure. <laughs> like, look at that hourglass shape. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's got some... He's yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good you need to be solid for weightlifting. Shoulder yeah. wasn't solid. It snapped. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going with right shoulder. <laughs> okay, I'll go shoulder. with the left shoulder. Okay. <laughs> right shoulder, left shoulder. <laughs> ah! What is that? It's what he does next, guys. I'm sick of you two in this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's the moment we're looking at. See, that's like a... Can I say, I actually remember that oh, because yeah. I spoke about that on air in 2017. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh, now he remembers. Yeah. <laughs> now he remembers. I'm sick of this game. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're, we're now moving on to our rugby game between Vial and Vailele in uh, American Samoa, the seventh comeback in 2014. Oh, <laughs> I know what happens. Can we play yep. that from the beginning, please, again, Edelty? I think I've got us a point, Sia. Yeah. I know what happens. What happens? He falls on the ground and he over-dramatizes it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what happens? Yep. Oh, okay. All right, let's see. He said, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you know, dude. That's Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout out to uh, James. Is it Bolabiu? The yeah. uh, Fijian riff. Yeah. Shout out to James Bolabiu for hand handling that with great care. But yes, okay. you have a drama <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I know that is. That, <laughs> that, that is. That looks like it from here. Bob yeah. Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Marley and yeah, don't worry. Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is them in uh, Jamaica, actually. Uh, Tana Umanga. In Argentina. <laughs> so what happens after Tana Umanga at a game, uh, All Blacks played Argentina. What happened? Is this mean? Did you say this is in France? This is Argentina. Argentina. Oh, they speak yeah. all Spanish. Yeah, they speak Spanish. So I, the, the ref, the interviewer is asking them and stuff completely in Spanish. Yeah. I think that the interviewer, after he said gracias, just leaned in. You know how their men are very expressive and they kiss each other on the cheeks? <laughs> I think he did that to Tana Umanga and Tana okay. looked at him like, that to you. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my guess. What is my guess? Does Tana Umanga say gracias? Or is that the interviewer? That's no, Tana. 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 Tana said gracias. I think what Tana Umanga does is he leans in, whispers in the interviewer's ear, and sings, <laughs> Come on, la flor. One ton, tama. Salinas, That's what I think happens. <laughs> Why would I have a Bob Marley song? <laughs> because he's Spanish. <laughs> they don't smoke the spleefs up in Argentina. <laughs> Yes. Okay, let's play and see what actually happens. Listen carefully. What did he say? Glass, shut up. He said, Did he? Play it again. Right at the end. It's on a umanga. <laughs> Mr. Umanga, <laughs> there are kids who watch this sport. Oh, <laughs> I don't, I've never seen that clip ever. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah, that's Shout out to you, Tana Umanga. I love that. that. That was in the late 90s or early 2000s. Do you think that's Argentina? the first time Argentina heard the word gefe as well? Probably, yeah. probably. That's broadcasting to hundreds of thousands of Argentina <laughs> Argentine yeah. people that are wondering yeah. what's that word? What you call them? Argentine? Argentine people, yeah. I thought you called oh, them Argentinians. Argentinians or, or plural Argentine. Oh? I'm going to need you to stick to sport, woman. actually, Matt. <laughs> I trust Shout you. out to Avondale College. Shout you started off so I strong with your Medicaid. <laughs> <laughs> we just went to school to Is eat our lunches. Oh. I thought Argentine I'm, was singular. Argentine singular. You know what? That's why I play sports and I'm not a star. Shout out to Avondale. <laughs> You're a journalist. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So that um, that comes to the end of our what time. What happened? With, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Can what we happened? get that one more time? Yes. Three, two, one. What, what happened? happened? How many did we get right? We got one right. Yeah. You yeah. got it right. Oh, yeah. I just. Yeah, you got the one. Yeah, yeah. So you got one right. Yeah. You know that? Get away, Caden. Yeah.
Well, um, well done. Thank you. Well done to both of you guys, and thanks, and thanks, Aaron, for facilitating that um, that game. That was that was cracker. There was, I think I laughed too much in that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was, so yeah, there was a lot of laughing, man. Was, <laughs> I knew there was going to be a fun episode. So, <laughs> now, yeah, thanks heaps, guys, for for joining us on the Overtime Podcast. I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see you because Willie, I'm sure we'll love to have you back on when he's when he's back in studio. But thank you uh, for joining us. If for all our listeners and all our Overtime followers, if you want to plug anything or where they can find you or they can listen into you um you know outside of the overtime studio the rush you can catch us on UFM 2 to 6 p.m monday to friday doing the rush if you missed out on anything you find the rush rewind on spotify wherever it is you get your podcast yeah and i look forward to the uh overtime team coming for a trial with us at fit mom so that we can have a class at crossfit <laughs> mm. do you know what we Wait should do you, Willie. <laughs> how about we since you invited us on for sports we'll invite you on for the rush but we're going to quiz you on pop culture stuff oh, oh that's a good one that's man. a good one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. all right i'll you and Willie. But I will yeah, wait for Willie to come back because yeah, I want yeah. him, not you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want TMOs. You don't want the tiny man fishing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, You're sad to my son. <laughs> no, I reckon, and Willie, Willie might surprise you. He, he's, he's a historian that far. Oh, Actual yeah. Z. Nice. It's are you saying that because of his age? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Brett, over time, team. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank, thank you for, for oh, listening in. We're, we're going to wrap it up here now, but that's episode 15 of the Overtime Podcast. We're joined by Aaron Ryan, our TMO, um, CN Henry from The Rush and New FM. You can catch them at 2 to 6 p.m. weekdays uh, on New FM 103.8. Uh, tune into the Overtime Podcast on Saturday, which drops at 10 a.m. Um, next week, we'll be back with our man, Willie Poaching, in the studio. So we'll look forward to having him back. Thank you, Aaron, for coming in and filling in uh, during his absence. I fit in anywhere. Yeah, sweet. So thank Can you Can you again. sign off in a, your best Willie Poaching impersonation? <laughs> I'd sign off in my uh, South African... <laughs> Oh, wow. that, said that we, uh, mentioned <laughs> before. <laughs> so thank you for listening to our podcast. Yeah. Was that, did that sound right? No, yeah, yeah. you sounds like horrible. Hitler. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so we're going to sign off. I reckon we wrap it up now. <laughs> we're wrapping up in the podcast. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Go Later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, stick to your new way next week. <laughs> All right. <laughs>